Greetings, aliens. This is TJ, and you're watching Studio Sessions with Astro Noise. So today, I quickly just wanted to go over a question I got asked on social media about to make a video about. Uh, so basically, what my buddy asked was, hey, can you make a video on how to get your low end, your bass, your sub, your kick, all that sounding nice and clean? So I just want to go over a few tips and tricks on how I do that. So here we are in Pro Tools. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And the kick, I just want to show you real quick. The first tip is tune your kick with your sub. Uh, you might not think that that would make a big difference, but it most certainly does. And I'll show you how you can find the tune of a kick using this free span plugin you see right here. And uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description. So real quick, in span, what you can do is hit this. If you can see my mouse right over here in the top right corner of span, there's a little cog wheel. Hit that. And right here on the block size. I think it's set to like 1,000 or 2,000, something like that. If you just up that to about 16,000, um, that will help it pinpoint exact frequencies because when the block size is lower, you'll see you get just a big uh, kind of rounded display of all the frequencies in that area. But if you up that block size to about 16,000, then you'll get a little more accurate readout and you can find the fundamental frequency, which is key here. Because if you find the fundamental frequency of the kick, then you can say, and span is really cool, right up here in the top, it'll show you the hertz and what actually the key is. So if you just hover this over the fundamental frequency, you find the key of the kick. So let's do that real quick. Fundamental frequency being usually the lowest and the most prominent frequency, which on this graph readout right here is going to be the loudest. It's going to be peaking the highest. So as you saw, I hovered my mouse above the fundamental frequency there, and it was reading a G1. So let's do that one more time. See that there, it's reading out a G1 is the note of our kick right there. This is just a sample that I got actually from a Chris Liebing sample pack or something. Uh, yeah, it's reading out a G1 that it shows you the exact hertz, the frequency range that it was in, if that's helpful for you later on. So now what we can do, which I've already done here, is create a, another track with a sub, whatever baseline you want to create. You can make that in the scale of G major, minor, whatever scale, just center it around G, basically. So what I did is I just, with Serum here, just made like a little pattern, and I just put it on a G note, just to keep it nice and simple for the video. I didn't go too crazy with a, a crazy sounding bass line. I just did all G notes right here. So real quickly, let's take a listen to how that sounds, I guess. Cool. So it's it's probably a difference that you're not really going to be able to hear, especially if you haven't done like extensive ear training. Uh, but it definitely just take my word for it. Whenever you have bass and your kick in key, it just makes it more harmonious and it makes it impact a little bit more and in essence sound a little bit cleaner. Um, so moving on from there, what we what I do next is I like to also sidechain the bass. There's many ways to do this. I'll show you a simple way. This is in Pro Tools, but I'm sure all across the board, almost every doll, you can do the same thing. Uh, so what I do is I just literally take this kick. I'll show you real quick. Just take this kick, the kick that I'm using, drag it down to a separate track. I name it Sidechain in this case. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, on this kick is I want to go to make sure my grid's on eighth notes. You see up here? And I'm going to slice that down to an eighth note. Just go ahead and fade it out all nice and even. And then just put that in on the grid where my kicks hit. Just like that. Cool. So now we got a side chain in there. 
and I leave it muted. So let's go to the sends on that side chain. I send it out to a bus. You can pick whatever bus you want. That doesn't really matter. Turn the volume fader up on it. And this is really important. Leave it or make it pre fader enabled. This means that the signal is going to go out through this bus before it actually uh, reaches this fader section right here. So the signal's going down here, hits the bus, gets sent out to whatever you're sending it out through before it goes down to this fader section because we're gonna leave this muted because if you did not leave that muted, you're gonna have two kicks playing at once, which you don't want. You only want this one kick playing. So go ahead and mute it. Make this pre-fader so it still sends out a signal. It won't mute that signal because you're, again, pre-fader, you're hitting the signal before it reaches this fader right here. And yeah, that's how you set up a side chain. Then you can go ahead and hide it. You don't need to look at that ugliness. Uh, so now let's go to our sub right here. Uh, any compressor is gonna work. You just need to make the input of that bus actually and ooh, it's wanting it to be a mono bus for this instance so let's go back to that side chain good learning experience here <laughs> let's go back to that side chain just make it bus 24 just a, a simple again volume fader up pre fader cool that works let's go ahead and rename it actually sweet now we can go back to our input, bus, and sidechain. Let's unbypass this, and I already have a preset that I like, sidechain preset. Basically, you just want the attack really quick and the release really quick because the release is going to be set upon the eighth note that we made it. If we made this kick last longer with a fast release, then in essence, it's gonna take that, that uh, compressor however long your kick is to go back to zero. Whereas if you made it long, then that's gonna have like a long tail and it's not gonna get that pumping sidechain effect that you want in techno, dance music, what have you. So fast attack, fast release, those are my settings. Ratio, I'm not sure if that even matters to be honest with you. Uh, so let's hear it. Hide this again. Now we're on our sub. Um, and I'll just dial in the threshold and you can see what that does. No makeup gain is required here because all you want this to do in essence is be ducking the sub when the kick hits. If you can see the note right here, these notes really aren't going to get affected that much. But this one right here, when it hits on the downbeat of the kick is the one that's going to duck in volume to make room for that kick to poke out. So you don't have two lower frequencies fighting for the same range. That's what a side chain does. Let's hear it in action. Cool, so I don't know if you could hear that. Uh, you don't wanna overdo it, definitely, as with most things in mixing, you wanna kinda err on the subtle side unless you're going for some kinda crazy effect, but you, you're you definitely gonna lose some volume. All you really wanna pay attention to here, though, is how much it's ducking and that kick is poking out, the kick right here where it's hitting on the same time that this bass note is. Let's play it one more time and I'll adjust the threshold so you can see, so you can hear the difference, basically. Cool, so you wanna adjust them to where they're both kind of grooving with, the, with each other and the bass is kind of sitting in the pockets in between the kicks because the kick you definitely want to stand out. You don't want it to get muddied by the uh, bass line that you have or any other instruments for that matter. You really want the kick and this kind of music anyways to be prominent, poke out of the mix and really be heavy because that's what people dance to in dance music. The kick is what keeps the rhythm basically. So yeah. That's one thing that you can do that I almost always do. And again, EQing, I made a video on this, but uh, another thing with uh, low frequencies basically is they have a lot of energy around the 200 Hertz range. And especially once you start adding instruments in and snares and 
a little bit mid to mid high frequencies those almost always contain a little bit of 200 hertz as well so you want to be careful in that frequency range i find that with in this case with the sub you don't really need too much of that anyways so you can notch it out is what i like to do so i'll i'll play for you while i'm actually adjusting the eq settings take a look Cool, so as you can hear, there's not even really much going on since this is just in Serum. I'll show you right here. It's just the sub, it's a sine wave set to a low octave. I'll play it in solo. It's not gonna have a whole lot of harmonic content above that, you know, a, a sine wave is in, in essence a clean frequency. It only has like a fundamental and maybe a few harmonics. A true sine wave doesn't, but uh, Basically, you're not going to have a lot of frequencies higher than the octave, the fundamental frequency that you set the sub to. So notching out around 200 just kind of plays, plays it safe to where everything else is going to fit within your mix, like the synths and the snares and everything I mentioned before. And also what you can do is just put that filter on. You don't really need anything above on this sub in particular, maybe on another bass. If you were using a saw wave or a square wave, you might need more frequencies up there. But above like 250, you're not gonna need that. And that's gonna, again, clear the air for more instruments to set on top. Because in this case, we're just using it as a sub to our kick. So let's check it out with that. I don't know why Serum does that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> as you could hear there, just kind of cleans it up a little bit. It removes some frequencies. You lost a little bit of volume, but we can always make that up later with just simple fader adjustments. But that's definitely gonna make some more room for instruments later on. And also on the kick, you can do the same thing with the EQing. I'm not gonna go too crazy on this because I do have another video that talks about like EQing and kicks in specific. But again, the 200 uh, hertz range is going to be an area where a lot of muddiness builds up and that can very quickly uh, destroy the balance of your bass region because for some reason that 200 hertz range sounds very unpleasant when it builds up and you don't want a whole lot of that in a mix you want to kind of reserve as much as you can for the synth later on because that's where the synthesizers carry their weight the snares carry their weight the bottom end of the claps if you've got a lower pitch clap carries its weight so you want to kind of reserve a little bit of space for those to breathe later on in the mix so again 200 hertz you can probably kind of notch it out i'll play it while i'm adjusting the eq settings Cool, so on this kick in particular, the thud of it, you don't wanna EQ too much of it out because then you're gonna lose some thump. I'm probably gonna go with maybe like two and a half dB, something like that. I would more intensely EQ this, uh, but like I said, I got a video on that. So for this instance, around 180 hertz was where that honkiness came from. You can go ahead, EQ that out. That's definitely not gonna be a very drastic change, but it will clean up your mix a little bit. So moving on, let's uh, take a look at this trick I actually learned in a YouTube video. Uh, basically, this meter right here, which is another free plugin, I'll go ahead and list it in the description below for you. Uh, what you do is you want to line your kick up where it's hitting about negative three on this VU meter. And you can adjust the reference level or the kick um, just to kind of get it to where it's matched up. Uh, so let's just start off with the kick here first.
Right. So we're around negative three on the VU meter. This is not this. Don't take this as a, a level adjustment video. I'm just showing you how to adjust your kick and sub relative to each other. Then you can group them if you want and pull down the volume faders so you can then get a better mix because honestly right now my kick and sub only you know as loud as they are if this was a full mix it would probably be clipping my master which it looks like it already is but we'll continue on <laughs> so the kick right here negative three what you want to do is slowly introduce your bass to where it's getting up around negative one negative five don't ever really want to go past zero. Use your ears, though. I find that if you keep it below zero and in between negative one, that little range right here, that's where your, your bass and your kick are going to be grooving. But use your ears. Let's go ahead and uh, take a listen to this as I play it, and you'll watch the meter here. I'm going to try and get it around the negative one, negative five, wherever it sounds good area. Let's take a listen. Okay, so in this instance, I actually thought around like negative five was a little bit too loud for the bass. It was muddying the kick. Um, so I went with like around, what was it at again? That's annoying. With both of them playing, I went just below negative one. In this case, my ears said that sounds a little bit balanced. I am on headphones. I would also usually reference this off speakers, but this is just quickly to show you that whenever you're using the VU meter, a quick way, if you're not in a proper listening environment to gauge your bass, is set your kick to around negative three. When you play that, um, in conjunction with your sub, you want it to hit around negative one, negative five. Usually that gets you a pretty good starting point uh, of a good balance for your kick and sub. So last thing I want to show you here to keep the video kind of short, I don't want to go too long, is with your synthesizers, you can also uh, kind of do the same thing with the sub. You don't want to go as crazy with the side chain on this one, unless you want that pumping effect on your instrument. Uh, but you can also sometimes, especially if it's got a little bit lower frequencies, go ahead and side chain your synthesizers too. That is definitely gonna make your kick sound a little more prominent and less muddied out, if you will. So let's take a listen to it as I adjust the threshold and you'll hear that pumping and the kick coming in and out. Cool, so in this instance, I didn't wanna, I don't know, I'm not building a whole track. This is just for example, but with the synthesizers, I usually don't want too much of a pumping effect. I almost kinda want it to where you don't notice that it's pumping. It's just kinda ducking out a little bit and you can hear that kick poking out. It sounds real nice. It sounds nice and punchy and clean. And if you get the kick and the sub right, man, your, your bass is gonna sound so much cleaner with that side chain, a little bit of EQ thrown on there. Yeah, so that's sounding good to me. And again, I do some EQing. Be careful around the 200 hertz range. One thing to do on synthesizers, go ahead and filter it out. You honestly don't need anything below like 90, 80 hertz usually with kind of a steep curve on that high pass filter. That's gonna leave room for the sub, clean that up a little bit. And sometimes below 200 hertz is not very necessary with the synthesizer. 
Let's take a listen as I adjust these settings down here on the low frequency uh, band that I have on this EQ, just to clean up the, the lower range to leave a little more for the kick and the sub so that this, this synth, the kick and the sub can all kind of live in their own space. Cause that in essence is the key of what you're doing as a mix engineer. That is how you're going to achieve really well balanced and clean bass sounds basically. So let's listen as I adjust these settings. Cool. So as you can hear in this example, and you, you kind of want to keep this in context to a full song. Usually you wouldn't EQ with only like three instruments and, and your song already. You would leave that to like the last part to its own mixing session, um, which I also have a video on. So you can watch me do that. But for this instance, uh, there was a little ringing, a little honkiness around like the 95 hertz range. Like I said, this is, and this particular synth, it, the sub, to be honest with you, is not too necessary. Maybe it would be in some instances, but kind of notching that out leaves a little bit more room for the kick and the sub to, si to shine through, and that is definitely going to clean up your lower range. You do, Like I said, you don't want to go too crazy because then your synths are going to get thinned out unless that's the kind of synth you're going for. But yeah, just be careful around there. And that'll definitely get you started with a cleaner mix. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is just a quick bass tutorial. Um, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead, subscribe. Leave a like, a comment. That really helps me out. And comment and let me know what you guys need help with. If you need to any help with like mixing or you don't know how to do hi-hats or chords or anything like that i've actually been to school for it i've been trained at, with music production i've taken music theory uh, i came from playing a guitar so i know kind of arrangement and chords and everything uh, so leave a comment let me know what you guys need help with and you can reach out on our social medias as well uh, astronoise music astronoise official on youtube uh, and my name's TJ Janae. You can find me on Facebook as well. Reach out, comment, let me know what you guys need. Hope you learned something. Until next time, peace.